Okay, first of all, I'm Just take a look at some of these clips. Well, good morning, everyone. We're back in the shop, partnering with other makers around the world. A gentleman by the name of Parker at Stock and Barrel does a lot of great videos that I really- Hello, everybody. My name's Jay. Trouble to the high wall, so many- a two millimeter leather point. Hey, my name's Nelson Maldonado. I'm from Apopka, Florida. My name is Gary. I'll show you my shop. Begin this journey of vlogging with all you uh, other makers. And this channel is dedicated to my leather crafting journey. So some of the tips and tricks that I picked up over the last three years. I just want to say thanks. All of you guys have been so inspiring to me. Right there, that's my business, Firehouse Designs. You can see this is my son, Parker. Hello. What I'm doing now, stitching the notebook wall. I'm gonna talk about my uh, Cobra Class 20. Are you with uh, Crabtree Leather Company? Shout out to all the guys and gals in uh, the Maker Bloggery Facebook group, Parker and, and Wit at uh, Sock and Barrel for even creating it. I'm gonna do something cool for you guys today. You make connections, that's how you grow, that's how you learn. I mean, I'm speechless. There's some production company over here filming a, one of those Hallmark Christmas movies. It happens every year that we've lived here so far. It's a hot spot for Christmas movies. <laughs> but it also means they park in our driveway and block the bridge. Crazy sons of guns. Hey buddy. Hi Indy. How was dance? Yeah. <laughs> you giving me a thumbs up? <laughs> You're getting good at that thumbs up, buddy. Hi, how are you? Hey, we never saw the movie that, that came out last year that was filmed here. They should say, see, I told you it was Christmas. Oh, yeah. Wow, that's so many cars. I just don't know where they're all fitting. Do you think if we come out here and walk around, we'll be in the movie? Maybe they'll just see us and recognize our natural God-given talent and they'll just put us in the movie because we're so good. I'm supposed to do here. <laughs> just go around and... All right, let me tell you about something that's been going on behind the scenes for a little while now. I've always felt like a good classic men's satchel should be a staple for our brand. It's kind of what we started out with. I've been through multiple variations, the number 29, the number 60, the number 64, and most of the time I felt pretty satisfied, but there was always just something that I wanted to tweak or change. And I think, I think I've landed on one that I'm really proud of and uh, I'm really excited to start getting it into production. I wanted the bag to feel real rugged and manly and feel like it was built like a saddle, like a lot of our products, but I also wanted it to be very practical and usable, um, which is where most of our products in the past fell short. They were either way too heavy, too bulky, too clanky, uh, too hard to get into and to access the buckles in the front. I'm sure there'll be some things I change over time, but let me show you what we got. If you follow us on Instagram, then you already saw this bag and heard my whole spiel about it, but but this is what will be considered the number 72 satchel size small. I've already created the pattern for one that will be just a hair bigger than this to fit a 15 inch laptop. This was made from a one-off mixed batch hide I got from SB Foot Tannery. I've got a few other ones here too that are going to be turned into bags here in the very near future. I just picked these up, I'm excited to use them. One of the things I love about this bag is the tuck lock closures. Makes it really easy to get in and out. The edges are turned with a top stitch. All the important stress areas are riveted. We got a double stitch down here on the bottom part of the gusset. One thing I really wanted to keep straight with this bag was the classic satchel look with the, the double strap and the lash tabs. That's one of my favorite looks of all time, but it kind of blends in the pattern and body style of a 1960s postal bag. We've got an exterior stitch right here, which causes it to fold into the bag like that and then wrap around to a turned stitch that's on the inside. The reason I love that is because it keeps these gussets turned in instead of poking out, um, which is what it would do if I had both seams turned in like this. So it works really well, and that was one of the big problems I was trying to solve. It's a simple bag, but it's classic and timeless. So it's gonna take a little bit of time before we can get this bag into production, mostly because of the cost of the dyes that it's gonna take, and the development, we'll have to go through a couple samples with Waterberry. But since we're revving up for Christmas and Black Friday's right around the corner, I'm going to take some of these one-off hides that I found in this mixed batch, and I'm gonna make a few of these bags. They're gonna be a kind of a limited run thing. So I'm gonna see how many of them I can make just within the next couple weeks or so, and I'm getting the pattern printed right now for for the larger version that, that will fit a 15 inch laptop. This is what our patterns look like right before I send them off to the printer. The main purpose of this is just to make sure I have the right curvature 
Make sure everything's symmetrical. It helps me know right where the placement is for all these little components like the lash tabs, um, where the straps land on the back strap. Um, these are the tuck lock closures. I don't have to do the math every time I make them. I can just make my mark right there and I know right where they go. The, the length of the gusset overall is something that takes a little bit of figuring out. So I do that all beforehand right here on Illustrator. That way once I get it printed out, I'm starting to cut into leather. I don't have to waste any leather because I know everything's just right. I'm gonna go pick out one of those hides, cut into it, and see how far I can get on another one of those bags today. Another number 72 satchel coming at you live. Let's do it. All right, it's the moment of truth. I gotta make sure I can get two of these number 72 satchels, the small size, out of one hide. This hide was about 25 square feet, and I just laid all the patterns out times two to make sure that it's gonna work, and it looks like it will. And if that's the case, then the price for this bag is gonna be right around where I hope it will be, which for a hide like this, it's oil tan, it's not quite as expensive as the veg tan stuff. I can get each hide for anywhere from like 50 to $100. Um, so with a hide like that, I'm hoping to land the MSRP price for this bag around 325. If I make this same bag in vegetable tan leather, it's gonna be around 465. But so much of that cost is eaten up by hardware. I get all my hardware from buckleguide.com. These little tuck lock closures have become some of my favorite things in bag making. Um, they're just so easy to use and they feel really quality. They go in smooth like butter, but they're really strong and tight. So I really love these but they're about seven bucks just for one set. <laughs> so that causes kind of a problem. So we're sitting around $30 per bag just in hardware alone. So if I can find a good alternative for uh, hardware on this bag, then we might be able to bring the price down even just a little bit more. But for now, that's about where we're sitting. I guess we better start cutting and we'll see if I can get two bags out of this one hide. The maker vloggery movement is in full force. I can't tell you how much I love seeing all your videos. I actually try and watch every single one of them that pop up in the maker vloggery Facebook group. I follow that hashtag on YouTube and Instagram and I'm always, I'm always looking out for it because, because the content you guys are putting out is so on point. And that doesn't exactly mean in video production standards. I know a lot of you are just whipping out your cell phone and just getting a real raw, rough cut, one take kind of video, and I love it. What I love is that you guys are turning on the camera and you're putting yourself out there. It makes you feel incredibly vulnerable. It really allows me to have a deeper connection with those of you that have turned on the camera because I've seen a lot of your names popping up in comments and things like that. But until you put a face and a personality to that name, there's just not a real deep connection that happens. One thing I would love to see is for this community to branch outside of leather work, because there are so many different types of makers out there. Woodworkers, jewelry makers, custom motorcycle builders. I, the list goes on forever. I mean, we're all cut from the same cloth. We're a little bit of a different breed. The process of creating is so incredible and magical that it's worth documenting. You guys, this isn't just something that I think is fun to do. From a marketing perspective, I genuinely believe that there is nothing better you can do for your business. Um, and I'm not saying it has to be YouTube, but being able to put yourself out there, grow a deep connection with your audience, your customers, show the beautiful process of you making your product. YouTube's gotta be one of the most amazing things, in my opinion, that has cropped up in the online world over the years. And it's only getting bigger and bigger and better and better. Let's just make some cool stuff. Just remember the things that you create in this life is your mark on the world. So when you're carefully, so when you're carefully crafting your products or you're creating a video, do it in a meaningful way. I swear a lot of good's gonna come from it. All right, I know some of you have noticed that I haven't been as active on YouTube lately. There's kind of a twofold reason for it. One, we've just had a really weird last couple weeks. Um, from Halloween to our Disneyland trip, but don't think I'm giving up, but don't think I've given up on YouTube I'm gonna be back in full force. Also the other fold of that <laughs> Remember there's the two one the other one 
is that I have been in communication and negotiations with um, someone that I am so excited about potentially partnering with. Um, you'll find out soon enough what it is, but I'm holding out some of my really good juicy content, the tutorial stuff, how to make this, how to make that. I'm holding out because it'll be so much better if we're actually in partnership with this company. But I'm just, I'm just ecstatic. I, I can hardly sleep. I'm so excited for this. It'll be good for you guys as well. So, so just wait. If you've been waiting for some more of that, like just clear, concise tutorial type content, it's coming. It's gonna come in a freaking tsunami. <laughs> we got some good things coming down the line. You better grab a cold beverage and maybe some popcorn and buckle up because we got some good times ahead of us. Thank you all so much for watching. Probably gonna hop on a live stream tomorrow, so we'll see you then. All right, love you guys, bye.